how do you start as a commentator? We're just trying to break, break the wall so you understand what a commentator does so you can appreciate who is a good commentator. I'm Toby Wan, and this is my ROG Masters Talk. Welcome back to the ROG Masters, where everything matters. The Corona is being that's the- <laughs> just fly! Oh no! Ah, what is this? Just hi, hi, hi. I'm terrible, absolutely terrible. I should just like, I should retire. <laughs> Like everyone asked like where, where you began and shed a tear voice. It was a sad time. I came from a very early time where you could just work really hard at something and you'd gain respect just because you were working hard. It's a very different industry now. If you're a caster trying to get into the scene now, it's a lot harder to get in because every man and his dog can stream. Think about what you're good at and then focus on that. Maybe it's commentary. If it is, then this video is probably gonna be very helpful to you. If it's not, uh, you'll at least understand some things when you listen to commentary. So when it comes to a cast, there are multiple roles that you can take. I work as a play-by-play -play caster. I'm the guy that brings the hype and calls the action and gives the framework to the broadcast. Then you have the analyst. The analyst is the guy who will explain everything that's happening on the screen for the audience. So you kind of work out what you want to take. Now, this is the basic way that you can develop a casting pair, but every, everyone does it a little bit differently. So, oh my Lord, no one's BKB. I've watched a lot of commentators and I have a couple of my own idols, which I look at. And I realized when I first started casting, I was mimicking, which isn't being you, it's being a copycat. So you need to find ways where you kind of represent what you actually want to say in the way you want to say it. Because if you just copy somebody else, you're just going to be another catchphrase. What makes a viewer listen to you and go, you cannot be replicated. You cannot be replaced at a tournament because what you do is unique to you. Before any tournament, you need to prepare. This means thinking about the games you're gonna go and what you need to actually cast it perfectly. So most of the prep I do is really short before the game. Uh, one of the primary things that I do is I look at the game at about four times the speed. Now this opens up my eyes and basically wakes up my eyes. So you actually see everything. It's kind of like lifting weights. You lift up weights and then you lift up your phone. All of a sudden you feel like the strongest person in the world. It's the same type of thing with casting. If you just look at it really intensely, you keep up with it and then you slow it down. Everything becomes a lot more clearer. How to arm you to know what is a mistake and what is good. Let's focus on not making bad habits, not making mistakes. Now, there's a very simple one to look at at the very start. It's called filler words. Now, filler words are the stuff that you put into your language that fills up the gaps. Normally, the best example is um, um, mm, ah, uh, things like that. So you'll find in filler words when you cast, you'll actually use other things. So actually is one of the horrible words that I used a lot. So we actually have, there was actually one thing, actually, 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 Another thing, hype does not relate to gibberish. So when you talk, make sure that every single thing that you say can be understood. Sometimes tone is enough to carry a moment, but at the same time, you don't want a garble. That's just basically screaming at somebody. And while that may be good for a couple of moments here and there, Overall, it's going to nauseate your audience and it's going to cause a lot of problems for you in the future because you realize that there's only a certain amount of weird noises that your mouth can make before you're going to run out of options. The last big mistake that happens, and this happens for a lot of new casters, is actually normally the bully approach. Careful of your judgments. If you are sitting there and you're judging a professional player and you are a nobody to your viewer's eyes, all you're going to look like is a dickhead. Do not be a dickhead. Respect the people who you are commentating. Respect the game that you are casting. Know that you can stand behind every single thing that you say during a cast or do not say it. I call this the nausea rating uh, and I got it from Rollercoaster Tycoon. 
So I always like to think of the roller coaster as the different energies that you have during a broadcast. So when you start it off, you normally start with a little bit of a peak because it's like, welcome everybody. And then you go into the draft, you go into whatever, and you keep this nice even tone. Now, nausea ratings happen when you go up and down really quickly. So think of it as a very smooth roller coaster. If you think you're gonna be jerked around all the time, are you enjoying this? So you just basically like you raise it up with a team fight and then you don't instantly drop after a team fight, you slowly bring it back down again and then you go back up again when the hype moment is, is right. So feel the rhythm of the cast, feel the rhythm of the game, feel the rhythm of the audience and then combine all of this together for a nausea free experience. Roller coaster. You need to be able to find different ways to discuss things. The, the, best, the best thing you can do is actually take the most mundane situation. Uh, there was actually a really great video series on this uh, where it was guys who would take cameras and they would record a car parking in a parking lot. And when that happened, they would find different ways to basically commentate the same situation every single time. It's a car parking. But how do you describe something in 10 different ways that's still the same thing? And this is where unique sayings come from. This is where like unique ways of describing things get assigned to you. And people are like, man, that's a Toby line. It's a disaster! Thank you so much. I'm going to put that on my Facebook page. That's, good. <laughs> that's exactly what I had. Very few commentators are liked from the first day. Most of them will make mistakes, most of them will have haters, and most of them will have fans. Most of the time you have more haters than fans. And it's difficult to deal with that and still do what you do. Like, How do you remain positive about the game that you're casting when you are continuously told that you're crap? I took nine months off casting. I almost retired from casting after I cast for a year and a half, just because the amount of crap that I got from the community, it was so intense that I was just so depressed. And then you kind of discover something. Uh, and I had to do this in a lot of ways. And it sounds egotistical to do it, but you have to ask yourself the question, why does the opinion of that person matter? Like until someone gains my respect, their opinion won't mean anything to me. Ignoring the feedback is not the best thing. Ignoring the feedback and just saying, oh, I'll never read any comments on anything that's at me. Uh, it doesn't help you because some of the comments will be really, really useful for you. And some of the comments are just gonna be straight up hatred. And the whole phrase of water off a duck's back, it doesn't work. Eventually, you're gonna get wet. Reply to the people who you respect. Talk to the people who you respect. And this will give you the strength in the future. One good comment will normally outweigh 20 bad ones in my book. So hold on to that one comment, actually make it worth something. And this is the best way to really, in my mind, survive what can be a very toxic community. Back in the day, you could not do this job full-time instantly. I was working 40 hours at least a week in retail. I would come home, I would volunteer cast for probably six to eight hours. And then somewhere in the middle of that, I would sleep and eat. Like I had no life for a very long time. And I've cut back on how many gigs I actually cast now. I do other work on the side. I make videos like this. These are the things that you can do to diversify who you are and what you do and even develop skills that you would never develop if all you did was the same thing day in, day out. I played around with casting PUBG. I played around with casting CSGO. I started as a Call of Duty caster. These are different things and different skills that sometimes will apply to Dota. But by doing them, I'm able to reevaluate what potentially I just take for granted. How do I cast a game of Dota? What can I do better? How do other games do it? How does other genres do it? These are things which are worth learning. You've all now passed the Toby Academy. Congratulations. Please click the link below, which may take you to a certificate that says you passed, or it may just take you to the ASSRG website. Who knows? <laughs>